Tomorrow, seven years will have passed since three people were brutally murdered and set on fire at their home in Pinion Pines. No arrests have ever been made in the case, and up until now, it was believed that that case had gone cold. I've been following this case for years. You may remember the friend of the youngest victim, Becky, brought forward new information last May about Becky's former boyfriend. Now two more people point the finger at that same person. Tonight, we hear from those two people who were close to the victims. They have new information that could break this case wide open. It was actually a headshot when she was going into, she was trying to go into modeling. Daniela Zermino holds this photo of her cousin Becky Friedley close to her heart. That picture is when she just got her headshots and she signed it for me. She said, I'm going to be famous one day. She never got that chance. Though thousands did come to know Becky, it was through her death. 18-year-old Becky Friedley, her mother Vicki Friedley, and Vicki's boyfriend John Hayward were all brutally murdered and set on fire at their home in the hills above Palm Desert in the early morning hours of September 17, 2006. The neighbor could see very clearly uh, through inside the house, it could see flames coming from inside the home from the bottom. Private investigator Louis Bolaños is working on solving these murders. He is doing it for free. It's become his passion. And where were the bodies found? Uh, not sure exactly where they were found uh, on the inside of the house, uh, but I do know that Becky's body was found out in front of the driveway, about 20 feet off to the side here, in a wheelbarrow, again, in a posed position. So somebody had put her in the wheelbarrow? Correct. Why would somebody do that? I mean... I think to send a message, um, just uh, make it very, very personal. Bolaños believes it was someone Becky knew well that committed these murders. Some of her family and friends agree. Her cousin Daniela, who was also one of Becky's closest friends, is now coming forward with new information in the case. There was something about him and the conversations that I had with Becky leading up to it that made me feel that he was, he was a suspect. He is involved, and I have no doubts about that, and I haven't in the last seven years. Daniela is speaking about one of Becky's ex-boyfriends. We will not name the now 25-year-old man, as sheriff's investigators have not named him as a suspect. Daniela says the ex-boyfriend had started harassing Becky in the months before the murders, and he was trying to get back together with her, but Becky wasn't interested. I do know of the specific circumstance that he, uh, when she was working at Denny's um, the night before the homicide, she um, had called me about coming in to harass her at work. Um, and Becky was on shift, and the harassment came to a point where they, somebody in the restaurant, a manager, felt like he needed to be removed, and they'd removed him from the restaurant that night. I think he was trying to, to get to her um, at a place that she couldn't turn around or ignore his phone call um, or just not respond. Um, by catching her at work, it was you know, a place that she had to, to face it and talk to him. Daniela's conversation with Becky about the incident was brief. Becky lost cell service driving up Highway 74 to her house. It was the last time they would speak. Um, that was the, the one thing that I did, that she did tell me about the conversation, is that they um, had, had asked her if they could just meet and talk, and they had discussed going on a hike the following day um, just to, to talk about things, and I think you know, kind of end it mm -hmm. once and for all. Just hours later, Becky, her mother, and her mother's boyfriend were found dead and on fire. Brandon Kugler Harrison was a good friend of Becky's. He's probably one of the nicest people that I knew. Becky had once lived down the street from Brandon. They quickly became friends and shared details of each other's lives, including who Becky had been dating. Brandon says Becky once told her an ex-boyfriend, the same ex-boyfriend that allegedly came in to harass Becky at Denny's, was a pyro, as in pyromaniac, someone obsessed with fire. What about any of them starting fires? Did she tell you that they were? It was a as she said they were pyros. And in what context? Like what they did, I, she didn't really get too much into it. Um, I think she, I, I vaguely remember. I think she said something like them setting like a mattress on fire or something just for for the hell of it, for the heck of it. Brandon says Becky was especially concerned about the two playing with fire because she was terrified of fire. Because I know she didn't like fire or anything. She got burned on her chest one time when she was younger, so. Yeah. No, she wasn't big on that. 
wasn't something she liked to be around her. It was one of Becky's fears that most of her friends knew about that makes the fact her body was burned appear to make the crime so much more personal. It is here on this plot of land where Becky Friedley, her mom Vicki Friedley, and John Hayward took their last breaths. Those that knew and loved them say it pains them to come back to this site and think about what the three went through in the early morning hours of September 17, 2006. They say they are angry the case has gone cold and it's been seven years. They want a rest made now. Both Daniela and Brandon are frustrated. They were never interviewed by investigators. I watched both of them call the sheriff's department to give them the information they told me. Hi, um, I was given this number to contact. I have some information on the triple homicide with Becky Friedley. Uh, hi, my name is Brandon Kugler Harrison, and I have some information on the Becky Friedley case. An investigator did call them back and took down their information, but nothing more has happened. It's very frustrating because I know in my heart what happened, and I know how I feel about it, what I think, and um, I just really wish that it would you know, be solved and there were some arrests made and we can, the family can have closure. Daniela tells us when the investigator returned her phone call, he said he would go to where Becky worked and talk to her manager, but that can't happen. That Denny's restaurant where she worked has been closed down for several years. On this eve of the anniversary of the crime, an exclusive interview you will only see here on KMIR 6 News, Becky's father. He's never spoken publicly until now. Ron Friedley is a retired lieutenant from the Riverside Sheriff's Department, and in his own words tonight, he tells me he's frustrated the case is still unsolved. I kind of always felt like I had a day that goes by where at one point or another I, I think about some aspect of it. It wasn't just three people killed. It was three people killed and then the entire place burned down. And... and uh, especially with Becky, placed in a wheelbarrow. She wasn't even in the house. She was placed in a wheelbarrow and burned. That alone tells you it was just anger, hate, that they were doing that. I mean, it was, it was like, I killed those in there and I burned the house down, but, but look at this. It was like the centerpiece. And I mean, from that, I, I, I felt that it was, somebody was really upset. Why? I, I'll never know. And it doesn't matter. Wouldn't matter what he told me or what what the excuse was. No one has the right to take someone else's life. Vicky and her boyfriend John, they had absolutely nothing to do with anything. They were just innocent people that were there. If there was other people that had had been there at the same time, I believe in my heart they would have been killed too. They didn't care who they killed. They wanted to get rid of Becky. I still miss my daughter. But I don't hate them. But what I really want to see is I want to see... I want to see them in a place where they can't hurt anybody else. I don't want some other parent to go through what I had to. So where does this case now stand seven years later? Why is it not moving forward? Tomorrow on the anniversary of the deaths, we talk with the Sheriff's Department about the case and could one of the reasons the case not be going anywhere is that there is a conflict of interest within the sheriff's department? That part of the story is tomorrow night on KMIR 6 News at 11.